Yeah, all right. Okay. okay. Well, what do you think of it? It's violent. Noisy. I don't know how people can listen to it. I think not my, not my taste. Actually, quite. Sounds quite scary, quite evil. From what you hear, what do you think it's about? Okay, I think it's about like, you know, like very bad things. Or like... Negative. Negative. More than negative. Yeah, because it's like through screaming. So what, what, what positive thing can come up from screaming? Our song is about uh, injustice, unnecessary things that happen. Obviously, it's a positive message uh, because living here in Singapore, we don't face this kind of things like wars or that stuff. Make us realize that how thankful we are you know, to have this peaceful country as like in Singapore. So, Storming House started in 1988. We chose Akko because that's the only music that we can preach negative. Yeah, it's this EP called We Set The Pace. They really did set the pace. And it was a good thing that they, that they were espousing positive values. Uh. The underground community uh, was attracted to the new sound of the hardcore music. It's positive messages. The whole positive hardcore lifestyle. I think, I think stereotypes, right, like for underground scenes like hardcore and, and all the genres of metal, that we are right? um, there is a stereotype um, that stems from you know, the whole devil worshipping thing and then generally we act very, very rowdy at shows so. and unfortunately uh, in Singapore... You... I think if you put on a black band shirt, people are just going to think you're, you worship you're the God. devil. Yeah. Parents or people will just like see hardcores, punks, metal guys, they say, okay, kid, don't be friend with that kind of people. They will take an example of that particular people, but in, in a bad example, they say, I don't want you to be like this, I don't want you to be like that. All these people, are, they don't study, they sniff glue, they take drugs, they go to prison, but actually, you see, they are not like that. I think most of them are not like that. I think the problem is that people don't look beyond the music and they don't look beyond the show, um, and therefore it perpetuates like, oh, you see this show and that's happening, you see all these bunch of kids in black and they're all, you know, like throwing each other around in the room. And There's ethics to, to being in a mosh pit, you know. You don't stomp, you don't, you're not violently beating on each other or anything like that. The music's hard, you dance hard to it, but it was never ever, ever about violence. But uh, I guess for, for the normal, untrained eye, it looks like you know, a lot of violent things were happening at the show. This must be 1992. There was this pivotal show by Stomping Ground and the Rollins Band. I think it's down at uh, Singapore Labour Foundation, somewhere in Tom Thompson Road. And uh, Henry Rollins, he used to front Black Flag. So he's like, kind of like very prominent figure. And like, you know, the media basically know about him. And because it was the Rollins Band who were playing, you know, uh, the new paper, got their photographer to take pictures uh, and then there were pictures of people jumping off stage, moshing. It appeared the next day in the new paper, you know, about, about saying about like this uh, form of violence. It created quite a big uproar because people were saying like, what are these kids doing? You know, why are they violently, why are they hurting each other at the show? Like, this doesn't make sense. We didn't get any kind of support from the mainstream so bad until they banned slam dancing and stage diving. The organizers have to pay deposit 2K. If there is any kind of slam dancing or stage diving, they will forfeit the deposit. I recall one time that uh, they had an open gig at uh, outside Nyan City. This band called Minus, they were playing. So some guys start to slam dance. So the police came. So they came in, they just pulled out the guy who, you know, and put them aside. They thought it's a fight. Back then was like, if this thing happened, it was like uh, 
they, they, can, they cannot accept it. Uh. I think that pushed the scene underground even more. That created like a big divide between, you know, proper gigs where everybody was well behaved, clapping politely, as opposed to, you know, moshing and pogoing up and down and stuff. When I start to play music, my mom threatened to cut off my guitar strings, so she cut off the strings so that I wouldn't touch my guitar and can play my guitar and just concentrate on my studies. Just to tell me that okay, she means business. Ah. Like, that time I was like, why she have to do this? Why she have to stop me from doing this? It's like, seriously fucked up. I took away time, effort, money from my family just for, for the band, for the music, for the scene. Now I'm trying my best to give it back to my family. Lah, you know? If people say I sell out, so what? I sell out for my kids. But I think biggest sacrifice is when my second child was born. I was touring KL. My wife was in labor. That was that I know she was going to labor and I didn't manage to be there. Um, and I don't think people will, will want to go through the same thing. To talk about stereotypes, you know, I think one of the biggest examples of someone who's People who stereotype us are our parents. You know, we do this because we love it. But our parents don't understand this because when they look at an echo show, they see people throwing each other against the wall. And, and they know we don't make money and all that. They don't, so. We don't make money and then like we... But that's you know, not what we're in It for. seems rowdy and it seems like, I don't know... Unnecessary, I think. Unnecessary and then we go home tired. tired. They oh, discourage tired. us. They tell us not to do it. You know, they say, why are you doing this? They try and make us see reason. We, my mom and I went on silent walls. Sometimes it's quite hurtful. Um, the things that they do or say, even though we understand where they're coming from. Echo's role in the music <coughs> scene right now <laughs> is um, letting local bands have the chance to share a stage with their favourite bands. So I think for any promoter really, local promoter, I think it's important that you give um, local bands an opportunity to play. Uh, some do local gigs, so that's you know, a great start. My name is Razi Raza and I am the founder of Rockstar Collective and they're all behind me right now. Uh, Identity was created by me as a platform and a showcase uh, towards upcoming bands and your A to Z local bands who wants to try out their newer songs. I think um, being a local Ben, they always have this problem of going against the grain, which is um, to the general public, Singapore society would never acknowledge a local band. We are actually fighting our way out to actually make the, the public and the society realise that there's actually a local music scene. We are people that really work hard on our arts, seriously. Okay, doesn't, I, I'm not saying that mainstream, they don't work hard on it. They're just being handsome or being pretty, can sing, you know, one package, people come. No, I'm not saying like that. But you see, we do deserve, you know, some recognition. It's okay if you don't like us. It's okay if you think that our music is loud. But understand that this thing is not bad. Uh, don't, don't just because of the loud music, you know, people jump. Don't because of that, you think that we are all bad guys, uh, prisoners, <laughs> drug addicts. No, we're not. Yeah. If you think you have good Western bands, they are even better local bands. Appreciate local more. Wow, you, you always must remember that. Singapore have this band called Home Rock, Grand Core Band. They're freaking heavy. And they are signed by major label from the US. You know. it, a country that that successful can accept that kind of music. Why can't we all? We as Singaporean, we should be proud if, uh, of our own local scene. I mean, like local act. They need our support. So Singapore, compared to uh, like Southeast Asia region, we're supposed to be like the one of like the leading country in Southeast Asia. But yet again, if you look at the the local scene, we are like kind of like far far back behind. Everywhere, whether it's finance or sponsors or venues or, or promoters, it's all this this there's no support from the community. So it makes it very difficult for any band, 
you know, to push through. Indonesia is like, you know, supporting their local scene. Even in Indonesia, the biggest one, even the local can really have like sponsorship and things like that. So to me, it's like, you know, just listen without prejudice, give your support regardless of like, you know, whatever genre it is. Singapore has, has put itself on the map being the first band in this region, in Southeast Asia, to bring uh, hardcore to Asia. Even some people might not know our history. Surprisingly, ironically, people in the country know our history. No, believe in your people first, then you can believe in other people.